Hey everybody, welcome back to the foundry, ye old foundry. There she is back there. Uh, I thought I would do a short video. Now, I've done this once before, okay? If you've uh, watched all my videos, you will have seen me use the three clamp method of turning over a, a mold, okay? Especially, th this is especially a help for those people who aren't my size, for instance, okay? Now, I did this, I molded in the Navy for 20 years, and one of the first things I learned in school was how to turn a mold over with a three clamp method. But principally, we only use that method on, on, you know, stuff that we did on the deck, you know, ramming up floor molds, because you're by yourself ramming up. You can't call somebody over, hey, help me turn this over. I mean, look how big this is, okay? Here I am, like this, and I, I want to call somebody over to help me turn this over. I don't think so. But there were some people who had to because they, they, were, they weren't strong enough, or maybe the coordination wasn't there. Now this is going to be not so much for the Navy molder, we, well because we're all gone, dispersed through the ether as it was. Uh, this is going to be for any of the, the backyard foundry people who just might not be big enough to handle the weight that would be involved inside even just one half of these molds, uh, they'd like this being the drag. Now as you can see, I've got this set up as if I'm getting ready to uh, ram up the drag of whatever it is. Maybe I'm making one of these again, okay? This is a peculiar shape, but maybe I'm making one of those. I got it down here. I got it in inside there. And 10 minutes later, five minutes later, now what I have is I have sand that I vented. And, uh, and well, I struck it off, okay? That's now nice and flat. I vented it. And now I'm ready to turn it over, okay? If you're by yourself and you've got to do about 30 of these and everybody else has got their own job in the in in the in the uh, foundry and they're trying to do their job, I mean, they would stop and give you a hand if you asked them to. But um, yeah, I was never one of those that really wanted to have help if I could do something myself. Now, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the end product of my experience. I don't even really remember if it was my first ship. It might have been my first ship. I really don't remember turn, you know, using uh, three clamps to turn anything over past A school, you know, Molder A school. So I must have been taught how to flip this over in my first ship. Now, there's two parts of this that you've got to do, okay? You've got to practice uh, getting this done before you ever do it in real life with a with a pattern in here and all that you don't want to have to take all that time that you just took ramming this up and then trying this the first time because well it might slip out of your hands you might not get it right on the ledge here the first time uh, it, any number of things can go wrong you, the, the weight might surprise you Cause don't forget, I mean, the inside of this 12 by 12 by 6, let me go ahead and show you, 12 by 12 by about 6, on a Petrobond sand mold, the, both the cope and the drag together, we had just, just a, let's see, just a pattern in there for a plaque. One time I decided I was wondering how much that was because they weren't tight. I mean light and they they so after oh, 10 or 15 20 of them started getting a little bit uh, strained in the back picking it up and taking it over to the pouring deck, okay? 
So I went and uh, weighed it, and a 12 by 12, well, by 12, uh, block of that Petrobon sand was 79 pounds, almost 80 pounds. Now, I know that the Petrobon powder and, and all that, the, the uh, petroleum products that's all added to that, it's, it's more in weight and density than just the, the bentonite sand and water uh, sand mixture that I use here, okay? So mine's going to probably be a little bit lighter. But if you haven't got the physical strength to be able to take like a 35-pound weight and flip it over with ease, you better just work with, uh, work with, with an empty one at first, okay? So that you can get the technique down right before you try it with some weight in it, okay? So, now I'm going to do it very slow. I'm not going to do it as fast as I usually do it so that uh, you can see it easier. But you gra grip it, bring it out. Now what you're trying to do is you're trying to get the forward edge of this gripped or, or snatched. That's not even the word I want. Attracted or something by this forward edge of this, okay? You don't want it to move. Once you get it going like this, now you've got it stuck, right? You just rotate it around that, around that period, piece of, ro you know, that uh, point of rotation, and you've got it, okay? Not a problem. It's, it's basically easy in, in, in your head, but if you're gonna try and save yourself the time of using a three uh, clamp method of turning these over practice on it okay it will save you some time okay uh, then I would continue ramming it up and you know doing the rest of it now but turn this back to where it was okay so bingo bango we're back in the past I've got this slicked off I've got it vented out and now it's turn, time to turn it over. Okay. Uh, that's not right. I'm getting way ahead of myself. Okay. Now this whole thing's got to be turned over. So maybe this is maybe I'm a small guy, or small lady, even a kid. Uh, between let's say 14 and 18, somewhere's around there, and uh, don't quite have the muscle yet to do it the way I did it first so this is the way of making sure that your uh, your mold is going to get turned over without anything moving on you okay if you tried to turn it over and the bottom went did all that number jumping the odds are real good you just screwed up your mold you know the mold cavity you're trying to take so much time to get it done right well, if you're juggling and things are moving around, uh, the odds are good that, that it's messed up, you know, and you're going to have to do it over again. So, so save yourself the trouble of re-ramming everything. Get three clamps. Now, my first time I went and, and tried to, and showed you the three clamp method, I got my pipe clamps that I use for woodworking, and what I was able to do I was able to clamp down here and use this, you know, and, and but see how long this is, okay? It was so long that I was really struggling with it. Even using three clamps, I was really struggling with it. So what I said to myself is I got to get the right thing. These are essentially the same type of, of clamps, pipe clamp, okay? Pretty close to the same type, except this portion is the part that's screwed on to the end of the pipe where the threads are, and this portion is the part that goes up and down. The other clamp had it the opposite way, so it was almost unbelievably hard to try and use it. <coughs> Pardon me. For uh, you know the clamping method, okay. Now for your 
for your, just in case you want to buy it, I got it from McMaster and Carr, and no, I'm not selling for them, I'm just trying to give you the information. Here, do I have, let me put this in the light a little better. There's the front of the package. Upper left is the, the uh, part number, and the rest of it is obvious, okay? It just describes to you what it is. You gotta buy three sets. I'm sorry to say that I don't remember what the uh, what these cost. I don't recall gasping with surprise, so it must have not have been overly much. But it's something that's very very important for uh, doing this type of work. So this part and this part is part of the the kit, and here's the pipe. Now this is just uh, three quarter inch threaded pipe chromed I think no it looks like it's galvanized yeah it looks galvanized because I can see the the zinc pattern in it and two foot long three quarter inch galvanized pipe two foot long I I don't think you would ever need anything if, especially if you, all you're ever going to do is bench molding I don't think you're ever going to need anything any longer or in, in something any longer if you wind up finding out that you do, you got lots of these pipes out there of different sizes, okay? And if you want to, you can get, like this is two, two foot. If you needed a three foot, all you need is two ends. I mean, one end for the screw. If you got a, uh, let's say, let's uh, say you're making two three foot long, buy one of these at six foot, cut it in the middle, you have the threads you have the th threads on this end so you'd have threads on this end these would go on those two ends and then the uh, open end that you just cut this goes on that okay so you know there's ways to work around whatever whichever way you want to do it now uh, I'm gonna put the first one on over here Okay, you do it very, very close to the middle if you can. If you don't have a whole lot of stuff in your way, you can get that very close to the middle. This one I put on this side of the uh, alignment pin. So this one I'm going to put on the other side of the alignment pin just to balance it out. Okay, now you take it, let's see if I've got it flattened out, yep, you take it and you tighten it down, you don't have to make it so tight that you're gluing up wood kind of pressure, all you're trying to do is trying to keep this stuff from moving on you when you turn it on its side and then flip it over the other side, okay, so this clamping one bad thing about this this uh, thing is if this is almost all the way down it starts hitting this so bring it all the way up then you can bring it down okay all right Now, that's clamped, that's clamped, you can see that side, it's on that side, I'll come around to this side, and you can see that side, okay? Now, another chief advantage of using this set that I bought over at, at the uh, McMaster and Carr is that, see this size of the cleat? That's at the bottom of the bottom board. This. See that? That's no longer than that. So that's not going to 
grip this when you try and flip things over. This is the same size as the bottom cleat of your bottom board is going to be so much better than the other thing. Okay. Now we'll just reset that. Now next, you've got... Why does this feel like it's off? Let me... Tighten that straight up and down more. Okay, that's tight. That's tight enough. Okay, now um, step two. Turn this on its side. Okay, everything's being held in place by these. Okay. Here's where the third clamp comes into play. Now you need to flip these things around. The whole, it, all this is is just to keep things in place. Don't want none of your pattern to move, none of your sand to fall out or anything like that, okay? That's in place to hold this side. Okay, now, <coughs> this is in place on this side. You take this last one off and set it aside. Now, it's a matter of, you know, just make sure everything's tight so you can put it over. You just lean it up. There you are. No mistakes. Nothing's been allowed to move, and none, none of the sand would have fallen out. The pattern wouldn't have been jostled at all. It's as good as you can get it, and you've yet, you've already, you've moved it over, okay? Now, let's say that you want to try and get these apart. You're going to do something unusual, not your usual kind of molding, okay? Let's say you're going to ram up, I think I better do it the right way the first time. There's a, there's, for some strange reason, there is a reason why you need to ram up the cope first, okay? And I do have something in mind for this. Okay, it's this way. Flip it over. Okay. Now, whatever reason it is that I've got this, doing this all totally different, is I want something up here in the cope that's normally not up in the cope. Okay, and later on when I do a bell, making a bell, I can only make a tiny one. But making a tiny one, same steps as making a huge one. Okay, and making a tiny one, I'll show you how it's better to have the, uh, the bell up in the cope than the drag. So, let's say I've got that rammed up, that's ready to go. Okay. Now you already know about the, uh, you know, we're going to pretend that we, that I've got the three clamps on here and I'm going to turn it over. I'm saving you some time right now. See how everything can go open like that if you're not careful? And this is not even got any sand in it. Okay. Okay, I'll flip this over. Okay. 
Now I'm gonna ram up the drag. Okay, so I put the drag on. Yep, that's the right side. Do I have something in the middle? Yeah, on here doesn't seem to be sitting flat enough. Yeah, I think I did. Should have had it the other way. Because these, these marks are not lining up right. See, now that's flat. Okay. That's why you make marks on these. Okay, now, remember, I've got this already rammed up. This is the drag, this is the cope. I ran this all up, strike it off. Now, I've done the part that I need to do to make this, this mold the way I want to make it, but now I've got this whole thing to flip over. And I can't flip it over, even myself. I wouldn't dare try and flip this thing over all, all together, okay? Because this has got to be almost 80 pounds to try and nimbly flip it over right not a problem if you've got your three clamps you just get your clamp gonna just make it finger tight right now what side did I put that on that side Put this on. Now, this being full, it is going to be heavy. But even if it is heavy, these are going to hold things in place. And if you struggle with it a little bit, no big deal. This isn't going to allow anything to go anywhere. Okay, so here you go. You lift it up. Roll it over. Move it where you have to. Get the other one. Tighten this side up before you take that off. Put the other, put this one on the other side. And once you've got this side tightened up, take the other clamp off. Then you can use these as handles if you have to. Bring it up, lay it flat. Now you flipped it over. Now anything you got to do on the cope that you didn't do before, you can do now. Like, I mean, you will have already vented it, I uh, hope, so you wouldn't have to do that part. But you might have to put in uh, a riser, you know, cut a riser, an open face riser rather than a blind riser. And you'll have to have cut your sprue make your pouring basin and then take it apart and do the rest of it okay you have seen me take I don't know how long it takes five minutes maybe to do the uh, three cl uh, clamp method to turn an otherwise unwieldy piece of 
of wood and sand over to save yourself the, the, the heartache of having to remake your mold because something fell apart and uh, screwed up your mold, okay? So, now you know how to do this. It's a piece of cake. The only bad thing, I mean, you can use, if you've got, if I, this wasn't in the way, I'd probably be able to use the other, the other clamps, but I'm so happy that I got these clamps because of the, the size. See there? It, you can have this right on the same piece of board as your, as your cleats are on the bottom boards. And you're not going to be fighting with it at all. So much better than the other pipes. And for that, just a, just a little bit for you to learn to make your job, or rather your work, easier. And uh, have a good time. And for those of you, my fellow molders and pattern makers, Liberty Call.